11, verse number 14, is considered another parenthetical chapter that is just in the midst to, to uh, give an overview of what's going to, you know, what's going to take place. But I'm going to read this chapter to you tonight, at least, and then maybe I uh, may come back to it because there's, there's a few things in here that I haven't gotten studied as well as I'd like. But uh, chapter number 10 and verse number, uh, verse number 1, we finished out with the sixth trumpet in chapter number 9. The sixth trumpet sounded. Uh, well, you'll notice in chapter number 11, verse number 7, the seventh trumpet sounds. So that's why we call it this parenthetical uh, scripture because it's in between the sixth and seventh trumpet. Now, the things that have happened that we explained to you on Wednesday, on uh, Sunday night, uh, those great, terrible uh, things that are going to happen on this earth, it seems like it's something out of a science fiction movie. And, and it, you know, you, you see things like that, and you know that that's not real. But in reality, my friend, it is going to be real one day. Uh, when all these plagues and all these demons are turned out on earth, it's going to be a, a horrendous day. And I'm glad that I'm not going to be here. Who's going to be here? Those that have heard the gospel and have rejected the gospel are going to be here in that day. And also those that have never heard, uh, you know, they'll be preached to and maybe they'll get in. But friend, those that are born again, or we know for definite sure that those that are saved by the grace of God uh, tonight, if the rapture took place tonight, you and I were going to be in the presence of the Lord. Boy, what a blessed thought. Amen. What a wonderful thought. But here we have in chapter number 10, uh, the mighty angel. Now, you, there, there'll be discussion probably as long as time is about who this mighty angel is. And I'm going to tell you right off who I believe it to be. And I believe it to be the Lord Jesus. I believe it to be him. And uh, I, see, I see nothing, you know, nothing in scripture here that would disagree with that. Uh, verse number one, and I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven. Now, listen, how, how else could it be? He comes down from heaven. Uh, clothed with a cloud. Now how did God speak to the to Moses on Mount, on Mount Sinai in a cloud? How did he direct the uh, how did he direct Moses when he was on his journey to the Red Sea by by a cloud? And so we believe this to be the Lord Jesus. That's that's some reason clouds are mentioned in clothing him several times. So he's clothed with a cloud and a rainbow was upon his head. And his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. You go back to chapter number one where it describes him as his uh, feet being, uh, you know, as also comparing it to fire. So we believe that to be uh, him. I believe that to be the Lord Jesus. Now here's what happens. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot on the earth. Now what does that mean? Does that mean it's really going to happen? Yeah. I believe that's really going to happen. Preacher, that's awfully far out there. No, it's not for God. Now, God created the heavens. He created the earth. He created the land. He created the sea. So certainly, if he wants to step out on it and show authority, and that's what he's doing here, he's showing authority. And he's showing control. And let me tell you, friend, God is still in control. All this mess in the world, all, all, the, all the, the things that are going on in the world that... You know, if you watch it enough, you'll get depressed. If you watch it enough, you'll get discouraged, and you'll let the devil use on that, use that on you, and, and wonder what in the world are we going to do? We're going to trust the Lord, and the Lord, as He's always had, has been gracious and uh, supplying of His people. He's still going to do that. God's still going to supply all our needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So we have a God here that is. Uh, has power. We have a God here that has authority, and certainly God in His authority. And Jesus, as He comes down and He sets one foot, His right foot upon the sea and His left foot upon the earth, He is showing His authority, and a, and cried with a loud voice as when a lion roareth, and when He had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. Uh, these are these are uh, seven thunders that will be heard. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. So uh, John was declared, well, he was told not to write uh, what, he had, uh, what he, he had seen and what he had heard. And so 
Uh, you say, what was in that? Well, I'm not sure. But I'll tell you this, the secret things belong to the Lord. God doesn't reveal everything to us. Uh, but I believe in the ages to come, God will reveal to us those things that uh, was, were, had been secret to us, a uh, mystery that had not been solved. God, God wants us to know what we need to know to serve Him. And God educates us through the Word of God and through the, the principles of the Word of God so that what we learn, we can use to serve Him. Uh, not so that we'll be smarter in the Bible, but that we can use it to serve Him in a greater capacity. And that's, that's why we teach the book of Revelation. That's why we want to preach that to you. So you'll be able to take this knowledge and give it to people with, you know, with, with authority that you've learned from the Scripture and tell people what it's all about. So John was ordered not to uh, write those things, but to, but to seal that up. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven and swear by him that liveth forever and ever who created heaven and the things that uh, therein are and the earth and the things that therein are and the sea and the things that which are therein uh, that there should be time no longer. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished as he hath declared to his servants the prophet. Oh my, what a day that's going to be. What a time that will be when, uh, you know, when this seventh angel, when it begins to sound. Now, we have this portion of scripture here concerning the little book. And uh, this is also a mystery. But I, again, we take the book of Revelation and we take it as literal for what it is. Uh, we take it for what it says, and we just believe it uh, as the Bible tells us. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. What is that little book? Believe it to be the same book that all heaven stood in awe of waiting for somebody to come and open that book, that scroll. And, he, and as, as, uh, as the, the father says, Go take that from the angel. Uh, you know, John in his vision, he went and he took that from the angel. He took that little book. Now listen, what does it say? And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. Uh, is that what John did? Remember John in his uh, vision on, on the Isle of Patmos? That's exactly what he did. And when he ate it, and he said unto, the, unto me, Thou must prophesy again uh, before many people and nations and tongues and kings. So he took that book and he ate it. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And so John here, he is in this parenthetical scripture. Now the next portion of scripture we study is going to be the study of the, of the two, the witness of the two uh, prophets. And so you think about between, I told you it wouldn't be long tonight, you think about between now and uh, Sunday night, if we get back here Sunday night and we plan to, who do you think the two prophets are? Who do you think these two prophets are, uh, that are that are going to come back? It's two prophets in the scripture, two prophets that you know, uh, but who do you believe they are? Now he says there are more than two. No, the Bible says there's two, but there's been controversy over who these two are. So you determine if you can, and we'll see how close we are. Uh, on these things when we come back on uh, Sunday night. But John is taken. He saw this, he has saw this great angel uh, of the Lord. He has saw Jesus in, you know, in, the, in angelic form. And he sees him come down and put his foot on, on land and on the sea and therefore declaring his power and declaring his dominance over the earth. And I say, the devil hasn't got it in control, but God's got, it, got the devil in control. And he's doing nothing. He's doing all he can but the devil does nothing that he's not allowed to do. The Antichrist, the, uh, you know, the beast, and the false prophet, those three, as they uh, rip and tear the earth, remember, they're not getting by with anything that God isn't allowing them to get by with. And soon, uh, soon, uh, here in this book, uh, we'll see the end, and we'll see how the devil uh, gets what he deserves, along with every other unbeliever, uh, that has ever stood against God. In all this period of time of revelation, you would think people, you know, I know, I think in my mind, and this is what I've thought, if I were living in this time, knowing what, you know, in the time of the tribulation, knowing what I know now, 
if I was a sin to strong delusion, I would have the mental capacity to remember all that's been said to me throughout my lifetime, and I would turn to the Lord. But that's not the way it's going to happen, friend. People would, even with all their mental capacity, they will be sent such a delusion that they'll believe, even though they've heard it all their life, they're not going to believe that. They're going to be believe the lie of the devil and be damned. That's what the scripture tells us. It's going to be a, a, a you know a terrific, a horrific day when all these things take place. Are you glad you're saved tonight? Amen. Amen. And you know what? As, as time goes on, as we see all the things coming together, a one world monetary system is coming into place. Uh, for, the, for the first time, I've heard talk about the U.S. currency not, not being the, uh, the uh, uh, what's that word? The, the standard currency, that's not the right word, but the, uh, the standard currency of the, of the world. But it's, it wanted to change to something else, maybe the euro. Uh, but it's going to become a one-world government with a one-world system, and we're, and the world is ripe right now. See, our country is not the leader that it used to be, and now we're in turmoil, and as the United States is in turmoil, so will go the rest of the world. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm an American. I'm glad I'm living in the United States, but, friend, we're living close to the coming of the Son of Man. Lift up your head, the Bible says, redemption draweth nigh. Father, we thank you for the word of God tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the business meeting. God, how, how well it was all handled and how uh, God's people can get together and help others, Lord, in the community. And Lord, I pray right now, God, that you bless, uh, Lord, us as we go our way. We thank you for the scripture, knowing that one day, God, you're going to set your foot on, on land and upon sea, Lord, and declare, uh, God, your, your mightiness. And, Lord, we look into that day when we're in heaven and we'll observe that, God, as you do that. God, there's thousands and millions untold, Lord, that are lost without you. Touch them, God, I pray, with the spirit of conviction, Lord, that they might come to know you. Use our church. God, I pray that the convicting power of the Spirit of God would move across our church, that, Lord, we as believers might get a burden for lost people and bring them in, that they might be saved. Help us, Lord, in the community, God, to do thy will. In Jesus' name, amen.